Have you, at any point in your life, felt small, incapacitated or irrelevant? Do you look at yourself and think that nothing good can come forth from your life anymore? Have you become so used to struggling from day to day that you have begun to think it is the norm? Do you even have any thoughts for the future that things could turn around for your good all of a sudden? Many factors affect the state of a person's life, one of which is the way we see ourselves, which in turn is determined by some other factors. Your background is one of those things that can make you feel small. Maybe you come from nothing. Your parents are not rich, influential, or anything. But that does not stop God from changing your story. Look at Queen Esther. She was just an orphan who had been raised and cared for by her uncle, Mordecai. Mordecai was only one of those who served at the king's court, a mere servant. Besides, they were slaves and strangers in a land. The future must have looked unpleasant, and it must have seemed as if there was no hope for her. But what happened in the end? Among all the women that were presented before the king, some of which must have come from wealthy and influential homes. Esther was chosen. Her background did not matter when God was ready to turn her life around. The same thing happened with Saul. He was from the smallest family in the smallest tribe of Israel. Apart from his height, nobody would have given any thought to him being a future king. Yet, God chose him. He went from being the least to the number one person in Israel in just a day. God is not limited by your background or where you come from. He loves to raise people from the lowly parts and place them on a pedestal. If he did it for Esther and Saul, he can and will do it for you. You are becoming great and where you have once been considered as nothing, as insignificant, people will have to take a lesson from your life. The environment is also another factor that affects the way we see ourselves. When you stay too long in the midst of poor people, you begin to think like them. That is why the association you keep matters. Some of us have been too long in a position. Our lives have become stagnant. We run the rat race with every other person, and since everyone seems to be content with it, why should we not? Well, we should not because we are not every other person. The man at the gate of Bethesda was such a person. Like many people, he was waiting for the stirring of the water by the angel something that happened just once a year. Looking at his situation critically, what were the chances that he would have ever become healed? There must have been so many sick people at that time, some with minor illnesses and better chances of accessing the pool when it was stirred. This man was even at a great disadvantage because he had no one to help him when the water was stirred. Yet he stayed at the pool and conditioned himself to think like others. For him, there was no hope elsewhere. Many of us are just like that. We wait for the same things others are waiting for. You think that promotion is the only solution to your financial problems. So you struggle like every other person. To an extent, the man at the pool was justified. He had not heard of Jesus, did not know him, and probably there was no other person that performed miracles as Christ did at that time. However, when Christ came on the scene and asked him if he wanted to be healed, his answer was a confirmation of how his environment had affected him. Instead of saying that he wanted to be healed, he went on telling stories of how he had tried to get healed and failed. 
Some of us are being limited by our environment. Because every other person is doing it does not mean it is right or that is the standard or where you should be. You need to step up and begin to see through God's view. We have been created for much more, to live a life that glorifies God. No matter what people have said out there, being small does not glorify God. It does not represent Him at all. Do not believe any religious garbage that tells you Christianity means that you have to be insignificant, lay low, and just struggle through life. No, that is not the plan at all. The fact that Lazarus died a beggar and went to heaven does not mean we have to enter heaven in the same state. That is a gross misinterpretation of the scriptures. If Jesus took all the pains for us, became poor for our sake, took up all of the sicknesses and lived in lack so we can have abundance, then we have no excuse for being poor or living small. You can decide to live small on earth and make heaven, but you should know that it is never God's intention for you to be that way. You just chose not to access the wealth that He made available. You can choose to live in abundance and make heaven as well. Take a good look at the patriarchs of old. Abraham was a very wealthy man and he had a smooth relationship with God. He was called a friend of God. So was Isaac, Jacob, Joseph and many others. In the end, in the parable of Jesus, we see Lazarus resting in the bosom of Abraham in paradise. One had lived a full life in wealth and abundance, receiving the promises of God for him, while the other had been a beggar, struggling to eat from the crumbs that fell from the table of the rich man. They both ended up in the same destination. So, it is up to you to decide. Do you want to remain small, or do you want to show the wealth and splendor of your father? Sometimes, man is man's greatest problem. People might have talked you down, made you feel you are worth nothing, and written you off as a nonity. That is fine, as long as you do not let them get to your head and begin to believe those lies. Besides, it is God's pleasure to fight for the oppressed and downtrodden, so you can always look up to God for help. Obed-Edom was someone like that. David was scared of taking the Ark of God to his house because God had just smitten a man for touching the Ark wrongly and decided instead to take it to Obed-Edom's house. Now, because of the presence of the Ark in his house, God blessed Obed-Edom and everything that he had. Someone that had been termed forsaken became so blessed that people could not help but notice it. It is those people that have tried to put you down that will eventually announce your greatness when the time comes. So do not let them stop you. Be like the blind Bartimaeus who kept on shouting for Jesus to heal him. Others tried to shut him up but he continued as long as God has not given his verdict, nobody has a say over your life except you let them. Even if people call you small, God has made you great. You just have to believe it and walk in that reality. Finally, circumstances can bring you to a place where you become small. Mephibosheth, the grandson of Saul, was crippled and poor despite being of royal lineage. When his time came, King David remembered him. He began to eat at the king's table and had a surplus. The widow in 2 Kings 4 verse 1 through 7 was in debt and all she had was a little jar of oil. It seemed very insignificant at the time, but it was the same oil that was sold to repay her debt 
and there was still some left to take care of herself and her children. Do not despise the little you have now, because God can multiply it. Remember the five loaves of bread and two fish that were used to feed 5,000 men, excluding women and children? Or the seven loaves and few fish that were used to feed 4,000 men? God is still the same and He will change that little into abundance. Where there has once been scarcity, He will cause you to have more than enough. You just need faith to access these things. Irrespective of background, environment, circumstances or people's opinion, God can change your status today. All you need is to have His favor upon your life and believe in His words and promises for you. This includes obeying His commandments. There is a law of seed and harvest. When you give even from the little you have, you are opening the door for a great harvest. Ecclesiastes 11 verse 1 says, Be generous, invest in acts of charity. Charity yields high returns. Also, when you pay your tithes and offerings, there are blessings attached to it. Malachi 3 verse 10 says, Bring your full tithe to the temple treasury, so there will be ample provisions in my temple. Test me in this and see if I do not open up heaven itself to you and pour out blessings beyond your wildest dreams. You have it there already, the secret to having more than enough. Apart from God's favor, there is also a part you have to play. God is willing to turn your life around and change your story for the best. He wants to lift you from poverty and bring you to the place of wealth and prosperity. The ball is now in your court. Are you ready to receive his blessings?